I belong to Jesus. He made me a new creation. He transformed my life. He transformed my life. And I don't see my life without Christ. Then the Lord led me to the story of Saul. Some know him as Saul, some know him as Paul. That on his way to Damascus, he had an encounter with God. And that encounter transformed his life. We all know that Paul was in the business of arresting Christians. He was in the business of killing Christians. Then on his way to Damascus, he had a letter that authorized him that whosoever was a Christian at that time, he would arrest them. And we find that on his way, he met Jesus. So that is in Acts chapter 9. Glory to Jesus. In Acts chapter 9. I started from verse 1. In Jerusalem, Saul was still threatening the followers of the Lord by saying, by saying they, he will kill them. So he went to the high priest, verse 2, and asked him to write letters to the synagogues in the city of Damascus. Then if Saul found any followers of Christ's way, men or women, he will arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem. Verse 3, so Saul headed towards Damascus. As he came near the city, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Verse 4, and Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse 5, Saul said, who are you, Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Verse 6, get up now and go to the city Someone there will tell you what you must do. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Saul was on his way to Damascus to go and arrest more Christians, more followers of Christ. But on his way, he had an encounter with Jesus. And the light strike him. Verse 13 says so. He says, it says, as he came near the city, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Verse 4, and Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you prosecuting me? Let us note, verse 5, the, the response of Saul. And Saul says, who are you, Lord? How did Saul know that he was speaking to the Lord? It's because when you have an encounter with God, you will know that this is supernatural. You will know that it's not from the human hand. It ought to be Lord. It ought to be God. Because nobody told Saul who was talking to him. When he said, Saul, Saul, why are you prosecuting me? He said, who are you, Lord? Why would he refer to him as Lord? It's because when you have an encounter with God, you will know that God has, 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 has arrived in your life. The Lord has touched your life. Because it will not be natural. It will not be a, 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 a natural state of, of encounter. But it was supernatural. He, his spirit was able to conceive by the spirit of knowing. Jesus. Because the spirit of knowing is only able to perceive things from the spiritual mysteries. The spirit of knowing cannot operate in the natural. In the natural, there has, be, there has to be evidence. In the natural, there has to be a physical encounter. The knowing in the natural must be taught. You teach me something for me to know. But the knowing in the, in, in the spirit, it's mysterious. 
So that's why Saul was able to know that he was speaking to the Lord. Because he was in the spirit of knowing. He was operating in the spirit of knowing. That you can only derive from the spiritual realm. He could only know by his spirit that he was speaking to the Lord. Those are the mysteries of the spiritual realm, of the spiritual things that can only operate by the spirit of knowing. But in the natural, the spirit of knowing can only be taught. So you will know something because somebody has taught you. But in the spiritual things, the, 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 the spirit of knowing only operates fully because only your spirit will perceive what is happening. That is why you will know that the presence of the Lord is here. You perceive by your spirit. You perceive by the spirit of knowing. Hallelujah. So when Saul met Jesus, when he had an encounter with Jesus, he was struck by that light and he lost his sight. We are told that the Lord came in a dream to Ananias, his servant, and he told him that you go to this place and you will find a man that I've chosen to work for me. And you go and pray for him. Hallelujah. Now when the Lord is appearing to Ananias, giving him instruction where to go and what to go and do, meanwhile, the Lord is also giving Saul a vision that he sees a man coming to him and, and, and healing him. Hallelujah. So Ananias goes and heals the man of God, whom God has chosen as his vessel. So when Saul met Jesus, his life was transformed. First of all, he knew by the spirit of knowing whom he was talking to. Secondly, when he was blind for three days, he went into fasting. He could not eat, he could not drink, he did not eat anything. So when God says, when we accept him as the Lord and Savior, we become a new creation. So the Lord today is saying, you are a new creation. The minute you become a his child, don't think of yourself. Don't, don't, don't judge yourself based on what you used to do in the past. The minute you became a child of God, that old self died. That old person died. Who is living now is a new person. And this new person, you cannot judge with the old person. No matter what the enemy can whisper in your ear and remind you of the things you used to do, you are no longer that person. You are now a new creation. And there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You remind the devil whatsoever that he brings on your mind, whatever he brings in your remembrance, that you used to be what? I'm no longer that. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation through Christ Jesus. And there is no more condemnation on, on, on the hey. There is no longer condemnation on those who are in Christ Jesus. And I am in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation of Christ. And I'm no longer uh, uh, condemned. I'm now redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And all sins have been forgiven of me. The Lord wiped away everything. And now I'm a new creation of Christ. So don't speak to me as if you are speaking to that person because I'm no longer that person. I don't know whom you are talking about. There are voices you must rebuke in your mind and you declare who you are. You tell the devil, I'm a new creation through Christ Jesus. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. So you can no longer intimidate me because the person you are talking about is no longer me. Greater is he that is within you than the one that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? You are now, have been made righteous through Christ Jesus. You have a righteous garment that you have received through Christ. And no one can come and tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody remind you of who you are. And stay away from a company of people who still remind you of how bad you used to be. 
you tell them that I'm a new PS person and you cannot accept who I am and embrace who I am now. I don't need you in my cycle. I don't need you near my life. It's time that as Christian we stop being these uh, 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 timid kind of Christians. Don't accept everything from anybody. Don't accept people to speak things that you don't want them to speak upon your life. Don't let people come and prophesy and, and, and prophesy doom upon your life by reminding you of your past. If people cannot embrace who you are now, what God has made of you, the new creation that you are now, you don't need those people around you. Cut them off. Maybe the Lord has been speaking to you, but we have not been hearing. You've been thinking, no, how can I, I this person has been with me uh, for years and everything. There's a time where the Lord instructs you to cut off certain people. Some, he will move them by them turning against you. But some, there are some where you have to remove them yourself. You be honest, you tell them who you are and where you stand. And if they cannot embrace that, let them live your life. You are not by yourself now. You have the Holy Spirit that's living on the inside of you. And then the Lord led me to the apostles of Christ. When Jesus was resurrected, he had the supper, he had a, a, a meal with them, then he left them. He ascended to heaven. And then he told them that they needed to go And wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Hallelujah. So that is in Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. That is in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Verse 2, suddenly a noise like a strong wind blowing wind came from the heaven and filled the whole house. And they were sitting. Verse 3, they saw something like flames of fire. They were separated and stood over each person there. Verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in different languages. By the power of the Holy Spirit, there was given them, there was given unto them. Jesus told them to go and wait for the Holy Spirit. He says, as I'm leaving you, I'm not leaving you by yourself, but I will send the Holy Spirit to come and be with you. He says, if I do not go, he will not come. He already came to demonstrate when he came, he was baptized and then he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he started his ministry. When, immediately when Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he went to Galilee to preach. He healed the sick. Hallelujah. After he was filled, then he walked in the supernatural power. He made an impact. Same thing with Saul. When he was prayed by Ananias, he received back his sight and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then immediately he went to preach. He started making an impact. Now his apostles as well, when they waited for the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit descended upon them and they, had, they saw flames of fire on top of their heads and they started speaking in different tongues. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They didn't in such a way that people that were around, they had the nose, they had the impact. Meaning that when Jesus comes into your life, everybody that is around you will feel the impact, will feel the transformation, will witness that you have now become a new creation. You cannot be a child of God that is filled with the Holy Spirit and remain the same and still struggles with what you were struggling with before. Everything that you struggled with before will move away from your life, will disappear from your life because the new has come. The new doctrine will be, will be in, indoctrinated in you. The new commands will be indoctrinated in you. And it will transform you. And you will become like Christ. You will become like God himself. Hallelujah. You will have new attributes of Jesus Christ. You will have new character that is like Christ. Hallelujah. And everybody that is around you will witness the change. That is why when the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, the people that were around, they heard the noise because the shaking has come. The Holy Spirit has descended upon them and it transformed them. And everybody that was around could hear. They even heard them speaking in their languages, which they were not supposed to know. Hallelujah. And the Bible, it tells us that after they were filled, they went. In, in, in verse 43, it says, The apostles were doing many miracles and signs, and everyone felt great respect for God. Verse 44, all the believers were together and shared everything. Hallelujah. 
Okay, before I get to 44, let's go to 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 let's go to 42. They spend their time learning the apostles. Oh, about 3,000 people were added to the number of believers. Meaning when people witnessed what impact it had on the apostles when they were filled with the Spirit of God, then they started explaining to them what has happened to them since there were people who did not understand. And when people had... They, 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 they were preached. When they preached to the people, then the people changed. The Bible says 3,000 people were added to the number of believers. That means people were impacted by the apostles. And they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior after they have preached to them. Hallelujah. So you are a new creation. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. May the message of the Lord empower you, equip you, and fill you. I cover this message by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. Be blessed on the Sunday.